what started as three specific questions. The protein folding problem is broken down into a matter of what is the principle of folding, how fast do proteins fold, and can we make computers figure out the structures. To understand protein folding, you have to start uh, by understanding what proteins are. Proteins are the workhorse molecules of your body. They're in every cell of your body. Uh, they're in all of biology. What they do is they convert food to making new cells, to growth, to repairing DNA, to converting light in your eye, to hearing. What proteins are is a, a string of 20 different kinds of amino acids. Um, and the sequence of amino acids leads each protein to fold up into a unique three-dimensional shape. The reason for our highlighting this problem now is to point out the incredible amounts of progress that actually have been made on this problem. And it also turns out this happens to be the 50th anniversary, if you like, of the protein folding problem, which began when the first protein structures were first discovered. What they immediately noticed was that the structures were a lot more complicated and a lot less regular than they expected them to be. Um, and that's one of the key factors that kicked off this field that we call protein folding, is basically how do we understand how the sequence of amino acids turns into a three-dimensional structure. Having the power of the tools and the technologies that came from protein folding accelerated our ability to understand Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, type 2 diabetes, mad cow disease, for example. We have made huge amounts of progress on protein folding, far more progress in using computers to predict protein structures than ever would have been thought back in the 60s and 70s. I've been in the field for a long time, and I recall the, the feeling of many people that the, these problems were literally unsolvable problems. And yet, if you look at where we are now, incredible amounts of progress. We now know the structure of more than 80,000 proteins um, in a great detail. Uh, 50 years ago, we knew two. I would say big picture aspect of what we will be doing in the future is moving up to the next level, beyond an individual protein molecule to the cell and applying the tools of physics, the methodologies of physics and the conceptual models of physics. We will be applying those tools now because we know how effective they can be at the individual protein molecule, now we'll look at whole cells. I think that's the future, it's very exciting.